Generates, welcome back to a Thursday episode. Thursday episode of the Here's the co- thing, though. There's something. There's something up with you. I don't know what it is. The nipples? No. Mm, is it like a new? Mo- oh, a new mole, maybe. It's a new mole. New mole. Mm-hmm. Just dropped. Looks good. Mm-hmm. I like it. Thank you get you. it done. I got it done. Mm-hmm. It's Workshop. Called the beauty mark. Oh, beauty! It is beauty. You mm-hmm. are. Oh, wait. Did you get a nose job? Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. I fucking wish. (laughs) But you know what I was fucking saying? This is the first time I've dyed my hair without going through a breakup. I know. This is huge. Or not like a breakup. Like a manic episode. A manic (laughs) episode. Like every time when I dyed my hair purple, that's when I knew I was going to break up with my Mm ex-boyfriend. And then when I dyed it blue, it was because everyone was telling me to dye it back blonde and i was like no fuck I, you fuck you. let me dye it more purple but then it turns blue i'm a rock star that's we were going crazy on yes. the road and then when it dyed it red oh honey it was going through something terrible oh something crazy crazy <laughs> that was a crazy girl that was a crazy girl and this time i was just like no this is cool <laughs> this is the first time i've dyed my hair and not in crisis and it was planned planned it wasn't willy-nilly. no i planned this weeks ago yes mm-hmm. and you've been alluding to the, f- the fact that alluding. you were gonna do something crazy yes i didn't even know if it was gonna be pink but i knew i was gonna do something it was the topic of discussion yesterday at work right yes Gia? you guessed yeah. rainbow yeah, yeah mm-hmm. i know well, I just, because you said wacky, mm-hmm. so I was like, okay, it has to maybe Something be like a crazy. multicolor thing, yeah. yeah. And then didn't you say, um, do you think she's getting a perm? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, my hair would fall out. I'm like, I think she said she was going to dye it, but she, she could fuck a perm, she could fuck it all. Imagine I got a fucking crazy perm. I thought you were going to go green. A lot of people thought I was going to go green. And, I mean, I'm sure you could rock it. But green's a little crazy. Yeah, green's crazy. I mean, when, after everyone was saying green, I was like, oh wait, now I kind of want to go green. I but mean, green doesn't come out. I don't think you'd be Cosmo and Wandoing. Yes, Wando. I would be Wandoing. Wando, Wandoing. We just came from the um, out and about pod. They're batshit crazy over there. Uh-huh. They're smoking crack and they just don't miss a beat. They don't miss a beat, and they they made me feel fucking unsmart and unfunny <laughs> they are the smartest gays they are quick mm-hmm. i love them <laughs> they are awesome yeah that was a fun little pod we did we talked about your loose hot dog pussy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i just keep bringing it up i know and it's grace's thing like i don't have a loose pussy hot dog water she, ta- <laughs> she taglined herself hot dog water yes <laughs> i'd be drinking hot dog water for real but uh we also found out that we're going to be doing the gay pride parade in la with uh that one about boys in which June. is very exciting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, we have we have a special. Well, actually, we have a lot of fun shit coming up. I know, guys. A lot We're, of cool stuff. We announced our um, spring break spring party. break party. Tickets but there, are on sale now. Tickets are on sale now, and there is a really special surprise. Yeah, it's, it has something about it has something to do with like getting pegged mm-hmm. or like ten percent ABV, something like something that. cool like that. I'm yeah. not really. I can't allude to anything, but. <laughs> Are you gonna be glad? Oh yeah, <laughs> you're you? gonna be very glad. You're gonna walk that plank. <laughs> yes, you are going to fucking eat this shit up. Okay, what was that guy on SpongeBob's name? Oh, he was just the Davey. pirate. Oh, Davy Jones. Oh, Davy. Oh, Davy Jones. Davey Jones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He'll be there. Oh, how about when they had like the actual? That was such a weird time. It kind of tripped me out when I was a kid watching SpongeBob and like David Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff, but then they also had that, that guy. Out of control. And uh, yeah, they rode Dave La- David Hasselhoff like a pony. And he pony. squeezes them through his butt cheeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was like a weird mix between he- they were like actual starfish and sponge. And yeah. Then that felt like, whoever, maybe they're on drugs. They were. Yeah. You ever see sure. those guys? No, I haven't. And to come up with the uh, 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 voice, you got to be on drugs. Yeah, SpongeBob's <laughs> actually hilarious when you look back at it. <laughs> it's really you can funny. watch that. That's like, a, it's like Family Guy level funny. It like, really is. It's, like it's just PG up. Family Guy. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite episode of SpongeBob? Mm-hmm. Colorful Krabby Patties. Oh, that's a good mm, one. That was my Brie. favorite. That one yeah. awesome. I don't know why I just loved it yeah. so much. Is that is that the same one where they get taken up in the hooks? No, oh, that no, that's a I different love the one. Hook one. Yeah, that's the hook one, one was too. really good. What about you? Um, I liked the one. I I liked the trippy one where he's like <gasps> alone. Oh yeah, uh, uh, Mag. When they're like chrome. Yeah, everything oh, is chrome. Yes. yes. Oh yeah, that or, was crazy. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it was like the brand new pet crab patty. Yes, yes. <laughs> what about you, Gia? Um, 
I like the one where he, I forget the context of it, but like all the jellyfish like live in his house and they ha- they keep throwing a party and he keeps yes! getting yes! really pissed about it. Oh my God, what about when, didn't Gary, Gary go away? Gary gets lost. Gary, please come home. Or the one where Mr. Krabs trades Spongebob to work at the oh, um, that's a good one. Plankton's one and they sing that song a, 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 stove, a stove is just not a stove, stove yeah. without <laughs> you yeah that's beautiful yeah. I go I go one more when Squidward has to live with the other Squidwards <laughs> oh, in yes. the Squidward oh, yeah. world and he's doing the same thing every day and he's like yeah. you know what fuck it Spongebob's not that bad I fucking Spongebob now <laughs> I I really like that show. That show was a banger. We just it live is a, a quick so ten many episodes, and I could keep going too. That's a thing. Like I need water. Damn. Why there's so Three much? hours later, yeah. oh my God. we have to go through the perfume yeah. department or the bearfish shark thing that's trying. Oh to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Ouch! Yeah. <laughs> my leg. Oh, yeah. that gets my mom every time. Yeah. My mom will be like cooking in the kitchen, and every time that she heard my leg, yeah. like, she would just crack up laughing. Oh, that is a freaking good show. It's man. a fucking great yeah. show, bro. You know what? Um, Joe Barrow described himself as Squidward. I saw that clip, Why and I would thought you it was want to be Squidward. Yeah, yeah that know. was a little crazy to me, huh? Hmm. We used to call Francesca Squidward all the time. <laughs> I could see that she just hates you guys because yeah. you're annoying. Yeah, literally. Like annoying the big and sister. I'm like, I'm like Patrick, and my brother's like SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I sent that to her because I was like, oh my god, you guys are twins. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what did she say? I I don't think she responded. No, <laughs> the Squidward would respond. Squidward respond. Move. <laughs> yeah, Squidward would be like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Okay, so we were doing interviews for like the final round of the reality show today and we were asking the question if you could describe yourself as one character or like align yourself with one reality star character, who would it be? And what do you guys think? What would who would you be? (sighs) Reality or character? Reality show star. Reality show star. Reality show star. (laughs) Like so I was thinking my favorite reality show is obviously Jersey Shore was mm-hmm. my favorite show forever. And I would say I would, um, mine would be Jay Wow. Okay. Oh, I was thinking yeah. Sammy Sweetheart. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. All right. Mm-hmm. So I'm if we're going, we don't have to go Jersey Shore. I'm trying to not go Jersey Shore. Countess? I know. I, I just never really watched a lot of reality TV besides like Love Island and mm. Bachelor. I've watched a lot of. And I'm not like oh, anyone you know on The Bachelor. Oh, you know you're winding out? Oh. The um that mm-hmm. the the Chrisley Chrisley guy. <laughs> Screw you and the horse you rode in on, honey. I'm not doing any tax evasion yet. <laughs> you are so Chrisley. Todd Todd Chrisley Todd Chrisley. Yes. Todd Chrisley. Mm-hmm. Chrisley knows best. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, I, I'm his wife. <laughs> yes, and I just take it. Well, uh-huh. he takes it. Oh, he takes <laughs> He's it. He's taking it he in the rear. T- <laughs> uh, prison? Maybe I'm like Lisa. Rinna. He's in prison. Lisa uh, Rinna. Ooh. Like crazy, but funny. Lisa Rinna. Yeah. I like that. You're a countess. <laughs> yeah. Money can't buy you class. <laughs> Money can't Money buy you can can buy. She, she just sings in sing song lounges. <laughs> She's so delusional. I know. <laughs> it is insane. That is also part of the process of this reality show thing. It's like how delusional they are. We yeah. only had two interviews today, but the first one we had. Mm. Can you say? Uh, I mean, I'll just let you know that this was the craziest motherfucker. We were Girl like, or boy? It was a guy. Okay. It was like perfect for a reality show, but also we're like, oh my God, you guys would have been cracking the fuck <laughs> were you up. Laughing? It was, it was were like you laughing? trying so really hard? No, you can't yeah, laugh because you're laugh. face to face. I forgot this part. Yes. Uh, me and Tara were just like, <laughs> like it was so like lip curling yeah it was like everything we wanted but also it was just fucking insane oh my god <laughs> we have like 10 more interviews after this and i'm just i'm so gassed up because <laughs> it's so funny like seeing these people try to like outshine each other Dude. <laughs> oh it's fucking awesome now i'm like oh my god i love reality tv and now i want to be like the guy from fucking real housewives so there's this show called um fuck i forget what it's called but it's it's about it's a fake show about producers <clears throat> and how they like, it's basically a, a fake show about producers on The Bachelor, say. It's like a Bachelor-esque oh, you've kind ta- of show. We've watched this Unscripted show Unscripted or something, but you got to watch it before you do this because it is, like, it's exactly probably what goes on behind the scenes. Producers and they are just so conniving. Producers, uh, like, fuck boys. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, they're all fucking each other. They're fucking the contestants. Um, was that a new thing? With Do you watch The Bachelor? Yes. Was that this year that the girl got kicked off for fucking the producer? Or was that an old thing I saw? I think it was old 
Okay. I, I forget what Wait, season that's though. epic that is yeah. so epic they said mm, beast we just had to fire one of our producers and i think you know why and you're gonna have to go home <gasps> and they said you had you had inappropriate relations <laughs> oh no you just make her look like a whore on camera you could have said, said she it got on sick. camera yes oh my god these shows are awesome oh my god they're so conniving that is freaking cool and man. you sign yourself up for this shit oh my god yeah but that's insane to go on the bachelor to find love and then fuck the producer i mean love is love <laughs> i mean that's just a beast legend move i know oh you know what i also saw you know harry jowsey mm-hmm I saw some clip on TikTok today where he used to date this girl from the second season of Two Georgia. Atendo, George, yeah. yeah, Georgina or something. It's Is Georgia. It Georgia? Yeah, okay. yeah. She's gorgeous, but they were dating and he she's went Georgina. on. She's Georgina. That's what I was That's thinking. It. She's Georgina. <laughs> uh, yeah, she is Georgina. Um, she went on a podcast and they broke up or whatever, but she said that while they were dating, he went on a podcast and they asked him like, do you see if you could be on any other reality show, what would it be? And he was like, oh definitely the bachelor and they were like oh don't you have a girlfriend mm. and he was like yeah well when that ends oh and she heard that oh that imagine stinks. your boyfriend saying that but do you think see here's my thing i think that these people who date after these shows are just dating to date for more clout, um, clout because that's that's the industry now it's like you go on these shows you become an influencer you have to date these people to grow your audience and mm -hmm. it's like all fucking facade i know so she's really upset she should have looked at her contract i know yeah <laughs> fuck you georgina your you feelings are not valid <laughs> it's so but i really up. do think that like it's i know fake. but then i think always probably the girl thinks it's real i know because if you have a guy telling you you're dating and and this goes back to the fucking like hype house couples and all all of them like what nessa was saying on the pod about how the relationships were fake and stuff it's like oh my god they are all were fake. they that's what that's what she said on call her daddy oh yeah but josh said no way and i i don't know hmm. I, we didn't know them during that time um alex coops our good our good pal <laughs> oh alex coops yes alex coops posted a um a clip with uh, her interview from Jane Fonda. And Jane Fonda said, I've been doing this for 50 years and you're one of the best interviews I've ever seen. That's, I'm like, that's sick. That is That's sick. really cool. That is legendary. <laughs> she was, she's like, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> you know what I feel? We're going to... We're gonna hang out with Drake or come close to him soon. Really? I have. I. You putting that on the 2023 manifesting list? It, it, it's <laughs> not even. It's gonna happen. All right. He is getting closer and closer he to Barstool. He's getting closer and closer. And I know that we could totally, uh, we could totally uh, beast up on the boy. Yeah. For I sure. think he would beast up and down. I'm just like I know it's gonna happen. Right, what's your first words to Aubrey Graham? YOLO what's good legend? Literally, what's good legend? <laughs> what's good legend? Obviously, you have to say that, and you have to go for the dad. Yeah, because um, we don't want him to think we're trying to fuck. Yeah, no, no, no. Like I just actually want to be friends with I Aubrey. I just Crane. trying to chill. What are your first words to him? Um, hot straight, dog hallway. <laughs> hot dog hallway. By way, straight up. YOLO like my life. <laughs> Y'all like donuts? <laughs> Yo, they call me donuts. They call me knuckles. Anything you need, I got munchies. I got fish. What do you need? Sorry, Jake. What's up? <laughs> Yeah, no, I would totally say something totally not cool and horrible. Mm. I would try to say, what's good legend? And then, <laughs> what's good legend? I would just say, ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What would you say, Gia? I would say, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I gotta go. Yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> gotta blast. <laughs> gotta see you later. I um, I would like go in for like a handshake, and then it would be I know. like a tap, and then and, like, I'd end up punching him in the stomach by accident, and be like, "What's up?" <laughs> then I try to make out with him, and be like, "Ah, <laughs> okay." <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> oh yeah. So let's maybe not meet Drake this year. We'll give it another, and then mm. we'll see if we can mellow out and chill. How old is son? Um, like for what five. reasons are you asking? Uh, because I have a little sister. I thought maybe I could set them two up. Your little sister has been nine for her whole life. Her whole entire <laughs> life. Like, which is seriously, seriously so she's crazy. been nine for at least four years. Oh, when I, did I send this to you last night? My mom was sending old pictures of us at the beach. Um, no, that too. That. that was um. Let me just pull this up real quick, and we can put it. We can put it on the. Your mom was getting nostalgic. Uh, yeah, she was at my grandma's house going through pictures. But look at this crazy shit. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, do, 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 do. There she goes. There she goes. Oh, Talia. So when Talia was visiting, she was like, you, you guys just, just gave just, up. I'm, I'm talking <laughs> oh, first. I can't okay. do two things at once. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm talking first. Okay. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, you're scaring me a little bit. Nah. <laughs> um, when Talia was here, she was like, you guys just like do to do throughout the whole city from night till dawn. Mm -hmm. That's why you fill a void with do to do. You're oh. listening to do to do music. 
Like, oh, that's mm-hmm, a mm-hmm. terrible thing to hear. <laughs> and I was like, I'm just due to do with their life, so I guess. So basically, that's just saying you literally have no life and you're just moseying <laughs> through life. That's no, a terrible just, thing to do. You it a different way. Because so we're All right, just so that's me as a kid. Yeah, legend. That's my little sister. I tell you every day. But it is so prominent in I these pictures. I tell you, it's like, insane. Her little sister, Molly, will post pictures on Snapchat, and I'm like, this is freaking me out. Because that crazy. is literally just knuckles. It's <laughs> like they look the exact same. It's, it's bizarre. terrifying. You know what I was also I gotta show Gia. Um, thinking, or what people people always say, like, oh, you look just like your, you just look just oh like my, your sister. It's like, obviously. Oh, my God. That's crazy. It is nuts. But it's like, obviously, you look like your sister. I know. Like, I I don't know. I kind of. The other two, I just don't look anything like. You all look the exact same. Yeah. Oh, my God. You and Nora literally look the exact same. Yes. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, that's the genetics. It's genetics. That is just genetics. Also, why are you the only person with curly hair? Yeah, it's crazy. Who has curly hair in your family? No one. Coco? Uh My auntie Coco? Okay. (laughs) Coco. Coco. Theo um, Vaughn thought I was um, Cherokee. Okay. um, So Theo Vaughn thought I was Native American. (laughs) He texted. So I get a text from Austin, the producer of BFFs today. And he's like, we're doing the uh, Theo Vaughn pod. And I kind of got pumped because I thought he meant all the BFFs are going on. He's like, no, we're doing it right now. And Theo Vaughn was like because they dave brought me up or something and or they were talking about the episode and he was like oh yeah the girl the native american girl and dave was like what do you what do you mean and he's like chicken fries cherokee right like that's a cherokee last name and dave's like no she just likes chicken fries and he was dead ass <laughs> what? yeah but then austin said he called me cute oh so Take we're back up. Yep. Because as last we left off, you, you didn't think he really liked you too much. I had no Riz. No Riz. The Riz was literally Riz below the charts. It was on the charts because it was not off. Oh, God. I had no Riz. I was not Josh Rizzardzing. It was so <laughs> Riz. I had no Riz. That was so bad. <laughs> oh, you know who's probably hurting today? Who? Josh Rizzards. Oh, my God. After his big 21. Big 21. I wish I, I, I wrote, like, have your first beer ski or whatever, mm-hmm. and all the Canadians. Yeah, he's been drinking since he was 18, and you could do it here i'm like all right sorry yeah no <laughs> shit brother <laughs> I, I texted him i said those edit accounts must be going crazy today he goes yeah brazy <laughs> <laughs> let's go legend <laughs> i kind of feel like a dick i'm not going to his birthday party i know because we did get invited oh yeah remember we we're did. saying we weren't gonna get invited we mm-hmm. totally did i don't know gab keeps way. texting me he's like so are you coming mm. i'm like oh. go uh, it's just like all the way across the country for one day mm. i don't know I don't know. And also, like, I can't really do an influencer party without you. Yeah. And I got to be here for my sister's 21st. So I'm like, uh, ooh, uh, what am I going to go? What's good, legend? Like, who am I going to talk to? <laughs> you can make friends easily. I know, but, but it, the initial walk in there is just I would the like, only thing you have to get over. Yes. And Josh is going to be blasted. So yeah, it's not even like I can show his shoulders. Yeah. And plus, I mean, that's his that's his world. I don't know if he'll give you the time of yeah, day. Yeah. What if he didn't eat? Who are you? <laughs> No, Josh is a good guy. No, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do but that. But like, um, but you're not gonna be like how we usually like hang out with them. Just like I know, I wanna, I want to go just to see. Like I've never been to an influencer party like that. We went to like little huddies, but yeah. and we kind of just stood in the background and screamed and yeah. fell. You fell a lot. I fell a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, every time I met back up with Brianna, I said I fell. I fell. <laughs> I swear, it's such a quick. That's when I <laughs> was just like I throw anything on. Oh my god, what did you have your sparkle I had a sparkly on? dress on. <laughs> sparkly glitter on <aren't> heels. <laughs> you were I killing was... it. <laughs> so wrongly Grace dressed. had on like my semi dress <laughs> from eighth grade and her and little it was, heels. Like, flowy was not flattering. <laughs> Dude, when she, when we That's went when to LA, tank. she kept it had nothing to do with anything besides you brought the worst clothes. <laughs> <laughs> every time I open the door, I'm like, "What do we think?" Brianna's like, "No," and I'm just doing it because to help you. You yeah. hated all of it, and I hated it too. But I just needed to hear it. <laughs> like it was just, it was out of control. I just bought every everything they had left in my size at H and M before we left, and yeah. I packed my suitcase and left. <laughs> like nothing matched. It was, it looked like she was on drugs putting the outfits together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we 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 fixed you some good outfits up yeah 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 but the here spot, and there the, the semi dress was out of control for <laughs> well, sure. and then uh, the thing about me is I'll, I'll have these outfits and <laughs> i'll wear them all the time <laughs> like remember my 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 pants with the floral and they say like seek your river in cursive <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> I wore room. those in LA. <laughs> those aren't bad. Those aren't bad. But Until once you, you wear it, you get close and it says I will it's follow like a, you. It's like a baby. you got them at Home Goods. <laughs> they have Home Goods messaging <laughs> on them. I'm like, okay, Lynn, love, TJ love. Maxx. follow your river. <laughs> follow your river. It's just a river up to your pussy. It's kind of out of control. My hot dog hallway. Yes. yes. <laughs> it will only be referred to as such. Yes. Um, well, that's good. You're not dressing like that no more. I'm just trying better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. a try hard. You're a try hard. <laughs> uh, you should always wear, we should always, I should always match my hair to your outfits. Yes. So just this tell me working. Tell me what you're going to wear tomorrow. I'll dye my hair that color. Okay. I'm going to wear. Uh, Barney suit. Okay. You go. You keep have that. Okay. It, <laughs> green top. <What? laughs> yes. Legend. <laughs> Legends only. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, our topic for today was breakups, and we can still <laughs> talk about it a lot because this was actually a crazy thing that I got my hair done for like I was there until midnight last mm. night so we were ju- we got we became best friends we yeah. were just talking about everything and we were in a very similar situation her boyfriend right now is like the same situation as my ex so he's doesn't he doesn't like New York he just started medical sales and he Wait, exactly the same <laughs> exact same and I was like oh my god like that's crazy this might end badly but like it was different for me i don't know but then we were talking about our exes and how she dated this guy for seven years and i dated my last ex for three years and when you're out of the relationship you then you don't remember anything that's it's weird. like in it's almost sad yeah it's like when you think about it you spend so much time with this person and then you get to know everything about them and i don't fucking remember jack shit and uh, i thought it was just, just you me- no because she doesn't remember anything either okay is it just you too <laughs> no i think when you get out of long-term relationships I think long term especially it is really hard to get out of a long term relationship because it's like routine you like block I think it's a mental thing you block it out and then like you suppress it and then you can't remember any of it and then like if something reminds you of them it's like a tearjerker Mm. like I don't like T. Grizzly yeah like Rod Wave (laughs) oh that's what I meant Mm -hmm. (laughs) but like it is kind of weird like you think well you know that you don't care about your ex or like you don't miss them at all but then there'll be like these random things where you're like oh my god sad i remember those times and it's like nostalgia yeah is it nostalgia in a good way or a bad way sometimes it's sometimes i'm like get sad over it yeah even for my first like old old ex Mm. i'm like i remember things i'm like oh my gosh what the fuck it's just crazy that you can be in such committed relationships with someone and then get out and never talk to them again yeah that's too bad it's like you lose a best friend yeah you can't and it sucks because like everyone says that you can still try and be friends but you can't yeah and especially if like you can't stay friends with an ex i don't care what you say there will always be like a sexual tension (laughs) like unless you're like an ex-husband i don't know i even think that's kind of sexy to have like an (laughs) ex-husband right that's cool me and joey were talking about that we were like it's kind of cool to have like an i want to be your ex-husband an ex-wife or an ex-husband because it's like oh you built this like life together and like you have to drop the kids off and it's like we used to fuck and it's like it's just like every time you drop them off it's like "Mm, yeah we we should have some good times and you have to you have to have a good relate well you you should you You should try you should try yeah Yeah. (laughs) um but the breakup scene so we were talking about like for topics for this episode and i think it's also important to talk about dealing with friends going through breakups mm. because it's uh we've you, we've been there a lot yeah we've i was been there for the breakup you were there for the breakup <laughs> screwy yeah that was <laughs> screwy crazy but um i think it's like very hard and i think it's different with every breakup obviously for like if it's a bad breakup or a good breakup but there is nothing more than your girl or your guy pal needs than a friend Mm. during a breakup and it might they might be you might feel like everything's about them or selfish or whatever but like you really need to be there for your friends during breakups because even if they don't feel or seem like they're going through a tough time, they are. Mm. They are. As ma- as much as they tell you they're fine, they are not fine. It's so fucked up. And, like, you you want to, like, be like, oh, let's go out and fuck. Let's go see new boys and all that stuff. But you need to let them cope in their own way. Yes. I don't think that's the immediate reaction that friends should have when their friends break up with people if that makes sense because that's what we used to do in college yeah my friends like we would go they would go through breakups and then my roommates would be like oh let's go out and let's go fuck mm. i think that is the worst reaction to a breakup yeah i, I mean i think just uh you, you, you gotta deal with it first deal with it because yeah. then because then you're gonna go out and you're gonna fuck and then you're gonna like you're gonna end up in my situation with the ruined with friend the group dupes, yeah yeah you gotta give yourself time to heal i think i think we treated that that last breakup with um with a with party 
mm-hmm. party vibes. We were like, go out, party. Yeah. And then not thinking about fucking, really. Yeah. You, you, that's not where your mind was at. No. You just wanted to not think about it. Wanted to forget about it, which, of course, like, girls and I go out and have fun. But don't let your friend fall into a, um, a numbing cycle. Mm. Like, don't let them continue. Like, it's fine. You went through a breakup. I need to drink five bottles of wine and cry. Yeah. But, like... After my last breakup, we were going out every single day. Every single like day. Like, every night. That's when we talk about the dark times on the pod. Yeah. And we were just encouraging the behavior with each other. Yeah, that's bad. And it was it was totally not good. No. And also, after that breakup, well, not just me specifically, but I think it's important to realize that breakups are kind of... Like, they're looked at as these horrible, scary, terrible things, but they're kind of, like, eye-opening and, like, very needed. I think in your 20s like breakups are essential yeah. to growing yeah and that sounds so lame because you're like oh my gosh breakups are the worst you don't want to go through a breakup but even like ending that things things with that guy like if you didn't do that or if you just ghosted him mm-hmm. then you just would have like continued to do that to people like you felt like a better person after right I, I i mean i still felt like shit so i ended up not ghosting him and i texted him mm-hmm. and i i said um whatever i said but he sent such a such a nice message back i know like really sweet like you're a great person like mm-hmm. i hope you find what you're looking for and i was just like it, it didn't make me feel good yeah. <laughs> but like see even that to me like that's there's like tears of breakups and i feel like that is totally one and i think that's more common for people like in new york or in our age right now is like they're dating people but they don't know how to end it yeah like gloss it over how mm-hmm. do you do that i think you did it in the perfect way i don't think anyone should ghost anyone it's just fucked yeah it's, it's so fucked because like there's no closure yeah it's like um you know what would be crazy is to just ghost someone you're living with <laughs> And you've dated for three years. Oh, yes. That would be crazy. <laughs> I didn't do that. It's, no, no. I'm, like just, I'm just picturing, that. like, imagine, like, you just stop talking to them. You're living with them. And then you're just like. That'd be. You just leave a note. Fucking You insane. need to move out. <laughs> I feel like I've heard horror stories about Me that. Me too. Really? Yeah. yeah. Just, like, maybe they're made up. But I feel like on, like, those podcasts where they do, like, the, like, the anonymous mm-hmm. questions and stuff, people would be like. My boyfriend, like, we were together for five years, and then one day, like, I just never heard from him again. Yeah. Yeah. Go- well, ghosting is, like, a serious thing, and it's because people <laughs> are yeah. scared to... They're just scared to... Like, s- confrontation. Yeah. Mm. So everyone's pussies nowadays. <laughs> and I was for so long, too. I, I stuck in my three-year relationship for one year extra because I was too pussy to break up with the person. You were silent quitting. I was what? Silent quitting. I was silent quitting. <laughs> yeah. What's this? It's it's like what people, it, it was like a big term that people were using a couple, a couple months ago. It's okay. just like people are at their jobs and they don't like their oh. jobs. So they just like, qu- like just like stop doing like little things here and there until they're fully not working. And then they, they just wait to get fired. <laughs> yes. I was silently quitting. <laughs> oh my God. Quitting. Don't silently quit relationships. <laughs> That's so bad. Cause then you make the other person think they're doing something wrong yeah. and that they're like horrible. You can silently quit, quit a job. Who fucking cares? That's fine. Fuck that job. I don't think that's that's a corporate job. Fuck those pussies. Yeah. But no, don't quit. I, I think you should be respectful. <laughs> go I mean, in, go in head on with this confrontation. Well, bur- like uh, burning bridges in any sense is yeah. terrible. Like it, it'll always come back to bite you. Mm-hmm. It's like you you learn that in many aspects of life. Also with like ghosting and shit like that, like it's gonna fuck you too. Like yeah. you need closure as well. Like when I was like trying to break up with my last boyfriend I was trying to do it like subtly and I wanted him to do it Mm. and I like I was like no we're gonna take a break and I was being like very vague about it Mm -hmm. and then I still then I confused myself I'm like what do I even want what am I doing like you just have to be head on with the situation because if you're not head on with the situation then you guys get all confused Mm. and then it's like what the fuck are we doing and that's not fair to either person are you you ready to talk about how you broke up yeah how did it go down i can't remember that was such a blurry time so that was such a blurry time i uh, i was like talking about it for a while with him i would like bring it up it was like kind of weird this is hard to like navigate breaking up in a long-term relationship it's like how do you live together yeah we live together he moved to this new city with me and then so how i was feeling was that he well, I knew he hated New York and I knew that he didn't want to be there. And then in my head, I'm like, okay, he's going to end up resenting me. And like, I kind of resent him because I love New York and like all of it was, it was like a selfish thing almost in, in both aspects of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Like he wanted to go be in Ohio and I wanted to be in New York. And I'm like, why can't you be happy here? I love it here. And he was like, well, why can't we be happy somewhere else? I love it there. And then I'm like, okay. 
And here's the thing. You can totally work that out and like figure that out in a relationship with someone that you want to to commit with like and Mm -hmm. if you want it want to make it work I think you always can make it work and if both people do but you also have to come to like the sad like sometimes you're just in denial where like oh we can make it work whatever because you're comfortable Mm -hmm. and I was like oh my god I'm totally just settling right now like I was so you saw how unhappy I was very unhappy I was just so unhappy I was doing anything I could to avoid being alone with my boyfriend yeah like I because I didn't want I know that was that was crazy yeah because I didn't want him because obviously he knew something was wrong Mm -hmm. like I was not myself and I didn't want him to ask what was wrong so I would never let him get the chance to ask what was wrong because I was like still stewing up and trying to figure out how to do it and then I don't know what came over me but I was I was fucking I don't know where he was he went out for a walk or something Cause he was like cooped in the apartment all the time. And I used to be like, just go outside. Maybe Mm. you'll like New York if you fucking go outside and whatever. He was gone and I was sitting there and I'm like, holy shit, I'm 22 years old. I am silently miserable. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm painting to the world that I'm so happy. I'm also lying to myself saying that I'm so happy. I was trying to convince myself that I was happy in the relationship or liked it or it was going to work. And I got so sad. I was like, oh my God, not to be like dramatic or anything, but I'm like, I don't want to end up like my parents. Mm. Like just because my parents kind of just stayed together because they felt like they had to or like, and I know we didn't have a kid or anything, but like he did just uproot his life for me. And And if you, if you just saying it out loud, hearing you say like, I'm 22 yeah he's he lives with you I I don't know it's just like a crazy it was like a crazy like like all of a sudden you're just grown up and you live with your boyfriend and you're in this new city and you're 22 years old yeah and you hate the situation yeah and I also felt like um I didn't even know me yet and then I was like I'm never going to if I just stay with him and be unhappy and I got super sad because I was like oh my gosh this is kind of my future Mm -hmm. it's just being not super super sad with him but complacent Mm -hmm. I'm like oh my god and this goes back to um I saw Kelsey Kreppel talking about this on a podcast and I thought it was like a a super aha moment I think everyone has it where you date like you date people and this might sound fucked up but I've dated like people where I'm like ah I'm just dating them but I don't think they're like the total one where like if they were to marry you like you love them but if they got down on one knee you're thinking Uh, there's totally someone else out there better yes and if you even had that thought where it's like there could be someone else better for me oh you shouldn't even be in the relationship and then she was like but when I met Cody I was like if he oh yeah proposed immediately I was like yeah this is the one so Mm -hmm. I think you like should not that you have to date to marry but like if you're in a serious committed relationship like I was living with someone and you totally aren't 100% on a future what is the point yeah and that's what I was thinking I was just like what what is the point of this? Like, I'm just hurting myself and him. The the interesting thing, like, as an outsider looking in was, uh, you guys would talk about, like, I getting know. married and stuff. I know. And so you just, in the back of your head, just, like... It was, it was a fucked up thing on my part because he totally wanted to get married and do all that shit. And I... What do you say to your boyfriend at three years? It's like, oh, we're gonna get married. We're, no, we're not. <laughs> not so, not so fast. We'll see. Yeah, th- that's when when he started talking about the future more. That's when I started getting terrified, mm. and think that's when I had like a reality check. But then I was also so terrified. I think during breakups, and it is different getting broken up with because I'm, I don't know, I haven't done that yet, but I'm sure that's fucking terrible to go through but I think breakups on both ends are still hard especially Mm -hmm. if you it ends well and you love the person but um the scary part about it was I wait what was I just talking about I had a good point fuck me marriage talking about the future talking about the future yeah oh fuck ending getting broken up with his home oh I was yes so I was so scared to like my main reason not to break up with him was because I was so scared of I'm never going to find anyone else or like be alone. And I think that's why a lot of people stay in relationships because they're like, I don't want to go through this whole thing again. Like, I don't want to go through the dating phase, which fucking sucks. And then I don't want to go through the meeting people or the small talk. The small talk is like probably the worst part. I know. It's like, how do you just speed round that and get to the good part? That was like the most terrifying part for me because I was like, I already have like my person that knows everything about me. I don't really want to go through all that shit again so that's was like one thing really holding me back and then once we broke up and I went through it for a while I was like 
I was totally spiraling and I was the one breaking up. And then I started questioning myself. Mm -hmm. And I think it was because I was just scared of being alone. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized like that little lull period of me, like being alone and like being faced with my emotions Mm -hmm. was like the best thing that could have ever happened to me. And I still going through it, looking back at it, even like six months after it, I was like, I would never want to go through that again. That was the worst part of my life. A year, year and a half later, I'm so happy I did that. And I'm like, oh my God. And also the small talk and finding a new person that is your person, like it's fun again. Yeah. Because like you find someone that you like, like obviously going. Luckily for you, it's, it's been, you didn't have to do the small talk. You've always, you've always like. Well, I did with the friend, Jake. Oh yes. That was brutal. And I was like, and that's when I was like, did I make the wrong decision? Because like, oh my God, this isn't working. Mm. Because you think it's just going to. If you like have an instant attraction to someone, it's just going to work. Yeah. But uh, no, that was like totally the thing holding. I think a lot of people back from breaking up is like you're scared of being alone mm-hmm. and you like already know this person. You don't want to put time and effort into another relationship. But it's like you can't really f- like you can't make yourself love someone. Yeah. Which is sad. I know it is sad. <laughs> it's like because you did love that person at a time. But it's also um i think really important after a breakup you just have to break the routine because like people are creatures of habit and like relationships are habits like Mm -hmm. you wake up you text that person you sleep with that person when something good happens you want to text that person Mm -hmm. so after the breakup it's those habits coming back into play and you're like oh fuck i want to text him but that doesn't mean you really miss him that's just like the habit that you need to break like it still could have been a bad relationship there was like weeks months after i was like fuck i want to talk to Nick, I want to call yeah. him. I want to tell him this. But it's like, okay, that was just like a habit I was stuck in. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's not because it was that person. And then once you break those habits and you're like free of it, you're like, oh, fuck. I don't really miss that relationship or that person. I just missed having that person to text. Yeah. Like I, was, I wasn't in love. I was just in a relationship. Is, do you think that's true for everyone or do you think that's just your specific I, well, I mean, case here. I think it depends on the type of breakup. Mm-hmm. Like, so when when I say breakups are kind of a blessing in disguise, I'm talking about like being broken up with. Mm-hmm. In what? Okay, so if you look at being broken up with, you love that person at a time. They loved you at a time. They are telling you they don't love you anymore. Don't want to be with you. Obviously, that hurts so much. But it's like, why would you want to give your love to someone that isn't reciprocating it? Like, you shouldn't want to be with someone that doesn't love you. And then you have to break those habits and just doesn't mean you don't love that person anymore, but they don't love you anymore Mm. type of thing. So it's like a blessing in disguise. You shouldn't be with someone that doesn't love you. Like, they don't deserve your love. Love you the way you love them. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Like, I think in that aspect of being broken up with is it's always a blessing in disguise. You don't want to end up with someone that's going to cheat on you or you do get married and they want to divorce you or like you deserve the love that you're giving. Mm -hmm. And so many people think that they, they don't like I didn't, I didn't even go on a date ever. Like he never told me I was pretty. It was never anything sweet. I was going to say he, he told you you were pretty, but he never commented on like your, like, qualities yeah like he he was ne- like cause or he only co- he only told me i was pretty on instagram he would comment like oh. he would never say anything in real life and like he like n- he would never be like i'm so proud of you yeah or, like no, i'm never. just like never just like a like a good like a good compliment that like comes from the heart not from the eyes yeah. you know what i mean yeah like there was it, fe- it felt like almost he'd be like you, he's like he was kind of good you're so sexy oh god like, like oh my <laughs> god like and now i'm just like with like the craziest part is like realizing the love you deserve or like the love that everyone deserves just having a partner that cares for you the same way that you care for them like in my new relationship i've i'm like oh my god you feel seen Mm. like once you are you feel finally seen by someone you realize all the past relationships that you thought were great were fucking trash yeah like every relationship i've been in before the one i was in now granted they were like good people and i loved them they were like friends yeah but i never felt like they knew me or saw me yeah so it's like it's that's, yeah that's that's a good way to put it i guess yeah i just never felt like they even asked like personal questions or i don't men are so surface level yeah it's crazy that's like, oh my God, the women are have it so tough. Straight women. <laughs> yes. Straight women have it seriously so tough. I know. It's fucking terrible. Like I couldn't, I give you all the props in the world for going, like I don't even know how you begin to hype yourself up for like going on a date. Five drinks. Yeah. Five drinks, get going. Like what do you, okay, I'm curious. When you went on your dates 
for not even just those dates, but when you are going to continue to date and go on dates, like what do you want? All right, guys, quick commercial break for Proper Wild. So Proper Wild is a clean all-day energy designed to boost your energy, focus, productivity without the jitters or crash, which is amazing because every time I have too much caffeine or I have too many crazy fucking of those other shots that I crash after and I feel like shit, with Proper Wild, it's all clean energy, so you're not going to feel like shit. You can avoid that, and you can drink this, which tastes super good. So there's no preservatives, no artificial sweeteners, no horrible chemicals, which if you look at a lot of competing brands, there's horrible chemicals in them. Um, it's just a natural tasting energy shot with clean ingredients that actually work I actually really do love proper wild we're super excited to be working with them so you can try their newest flavors they have strawberry kiwi apple and lime this is also a ginger flavor which is super good uh, I've been drinking them a lot recently because I've been having to it's like showtime baby we got a lot of shit we're busy people these have been keeping me up to go so go to properwild.com slash barstool to try proper wild 30% off that's a great discount so go to properwild.com slash barstool to try proper wild 30% off make sure to check it out they're super good like, what do you want in a guy? I, w I mean, I, <laughs> a you in a guy. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. A friend, right? Like, a, like, a, like somebody who knows me in and out. It's like, it's easy. Mm -hmm. It's, I, I don't have to ask for anything. Yeah. And banter. Mm -hmm. I need banter. I need talk, That's right? like, that was like the, that was like the red flag on the kid I, not that he had red flags. I feel bad for this kid. It's not a red flag. No, but you guys like, just want a match. It was just like he had no banter. Like You I'd, haven't said anything bad about him. I know. I, I just. Ever, even to me off camera. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and, but like, um, just, I just felt like I was like putting on a show the whole time. Mm -hmm. And like that could be circumstantial because, I mean, he did reply to your story and. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. But like, I just, I just. I would ask him a question and it would be like a two sentence answer. And I'd be like, all right, well, yeah, that's like, the thing about fucking men. I feel like th they don't know how to ask anything. It's like, it's like, you need to like, we're doing the small talk thing. Like, let's do the small talk thing, but let's go a little bit further. Like at least have answers to questions. Like there. And one of the, one of the, the things he said, I think I said like, Oh, like I'm a con or something like, like I'm like, I probably said something like rude. I'm like, Oh, I'm a con. And he's like, oh, I don't like using that word in front of women. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trying to be a knight in shining I'm like, that was gross. Can you just say it? Just say it right now. <laughs> it seems even more misogynistic I know. not to say cunt in front I'm of like, a woman. I'm like, I'm not a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just grace. I'm, I'm dude, we're two guys hanging out. <laughs> I know. That is, I think, uh, different for us and girls like us, though. Like, we don't want to be pampered and treated like that. Yeah. So it is hard for us to find people in relationships especially um, but um what do you what do you like what do you ask a guy when you go on a first date like what were you what was your guys's conversations first first date was pretty blurry and he, he he kept um on the second date like circling back to the first day like oh i told you this and oh, i was like okay yeah so like on the first date <laughs> did you like did you guys just try to find like common interests yeah um <laughs> big one for me and i'm just like ridiculous but like I want I want to know like is the humor the humor compatible? Mm -hmm. That's the big one for me. And then like um like what like what are your friends like? Mm. So I'll kind of be like, "Oh, do you have like friends in the city? Like what do you guys like like what do you guys do?" Cuz I learned I actually learned this lesson like when I first um when I first moved to that that new high school in high school. Yeah. My freshman year, I I scanned the lunchroom and i'm like who am i gonna sit with mm -hmm. and i sat down and i'm like I, th I think these i think this is gonna be my crew i sat down and that was my first question i was like what do you guys like to do like on the weekends and yeah. they they hit me with i don't know like sometimes we go bowling i was like all right you guys i'm not sitting with you tomorrow that's, <laughs> that that's gonna do crew. it for me thank you that's not my crew <laughs> i was just like um just seeing if you got you have like the same like interests and stuff yeah like I don't know. And then, it, and then it's like, well, what, what are my interests? Like, I, <laughs> I, like, I like to party. <laughs> I know. That's tough. Also, something else that sucks about fucking breakups is friend groups after. Mm. Like, if you date someone, because when you're... When you're dating someone, especially for a long period of time, even if it is just like six months, you go and meet their friends, you hang out with their friend group, you usually like integrate friend groups, mm -hmm. and then you really like some of your boyfriend's or girlfriend's friends, yes. and like you want to continue those relationships. But then they after the breakup, loyalty. <laughs> it's like, oh, they were their friend first. Mm -hmm. Like, it's such an awkward fucking sticky situation. And I think, I think as you get older, 
it, you're just more mature and it's like you could stay friends with those people in like different settings and stuff mm-hmm. but it is so fucking hard after breakups to be like holy shit I want to stay friends with those people but I can't you're nodding did you go through that <laughs> <laughs> yeah I like we were in the same friend group like most I have my high school friends but yeah. most of the time I was with like our friends Mm -hmm. so when we broke up like one of the biggest things that was like making me scared was the fact that like I'm about to lose like so many friends because a lot of them were originally his friends Mm -hmm. but like people stay in relationships for that reason too yeah scared of losing friends I it was nice though because like they I still saw them out and stuff and they were still very nice to me I could definitely tell that they were like a a little awkward Mm -hmm. but like obviously like my girlfriend who was like in our friend group she was like I would never like give up our friendship to like hang out with like the friend group I'd much rather like be friends with you so it was nice but yeah that was definitely like one of my biggest concerns was just like damn I'm just I'm about to lose like a solid like 10 friends yeah. and that stinks and that's then, a scary job and then you hope they'll, they'll, they'll do some shared custody yeah <laughs> just like oh I, I'll, I'll get them this weekend you get them next week yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think like I don't think that should stop anyone from breaking up with people because like you said if they're like true friends within the group they would never uh, completely abandon you so like yeah. don't let that hold you back and staying in a miserable yeah. relationship circling back um about 20 minutes because okay. it's been on my mind um you said like when you broke up like you needed to be alone to like kind of like figure out what the fuck was going on whatever mm-hmm. um i i don't think i gave you that chance because i i knew you mm-hmm. and i knew if you if you were alone that it would it bad things happen yeah so i, I think it would that was a slippery slope like you needed to be alone mm-hmm. but like it was scary to let you be alone yeah and then instead of that you you jumped into like a a little fling thing yeah so you didn't have to be alone exactly and I was like I guess that works so yeah that was tough and it was I think after breakups people have like identity crises too mm-hmm. because when you're in a relationship for so long you kind of like especially one that you ended you ended it for a reason because you kind of lost yourself in the relationship or even if you got broken up with like you don't really remember yourself without it because if you're in a long-term relationship you're spending fucking almost every day together Mm -hmm. and after that like when I entered the relationship I was like fuck I'm having an identity crisis too like it was like everything on top of one and that's where I think uh breakups can get really scary for people Mm -hmm. because it all hits them at once it's like a it feels like it's seriously the end of the world because you feel like you don't know what your next move is you don't know what you should be doing who you are if you made the right choice Mm -hmm. so that was like why I needed to be alone and just like think about things but instead of doing that because it was so scary don't make the mistake of jumping into like a rebound thing yeah and also because it hurts the other person Mm -hmm. like I totally fucked that guy over so hard and I let him on so hard and after a breakup you're so vulnerable where you think you need like or you it almost feels like you have yeah like like you need it like you need to be loved during that time because you're like I just lost so much love so you would almost jump into anything just to feel something again Mm -hmm. and if you just feel your feelings I know that sounds so terrible but like you can't really be happy again without feeling the sadness like you have to go through the motions of it like you you can't just be happy all the time and ignore it because you're not actually happy like you have to feel your feelings yeah you can't numb it out and you can't mask it and so many people do that after relationships and it's just it's not the right move I'm talking even if you do have to lock yourself in your room for two weeks and fucking cry it all out Mm -hmm. write it down fucking call your mom go home change your scenery you should you shouldn't feel ashamed of that yeah people are so embarrassed after breakups too mm-hmm. which is i don't think you should be embarrassed at all after a breakup like i said earlier it's like you're just the, you're not meant for each other yeah. even if you get cheated on or anything that person should be embarrassed you didn't do anything you didn't do anything wrong mm-hmm. like you you did the opposite you were the loyal one you got cheated on shouldn't be embarrassed to say it that it just makes you it probably just makes you like i don't know but like it probably just makes you feel like what the fuck did I do to, yeah. to deserve that? Yeah, yeah. Like, totally. that's sit there how everyone with that. feels. But and you shouldn't. It's a reflection of the other person. Yeah. And then, so, like, the, the person who's breaking up with the, the other person, they, they go through regrets because they made the decision. Mm-hmm. And then the other person goes through their own regrets, like, I could have done something different. And yes. it's, like, two polar sides of regret. Yeah. yeah it's, yeah, totally. like, two grieving processes. Yes. Really. And it, it's One's just, like... One's definitely worse than the other. Yeah, for sure. 
but um it's like too, it's just two f- what ifs like yeah you always after a breakup even if it did end well because me and nick like we balled our eyes out when he, we left each other like yeah. it was so sad and i was like holy shit like are we gonna get back together like this yeah. is like the saddest thing ever we you like, talked to him for a little bit i talked to him for a while and then yeah. it stopped but um how did it stop do you know just i just I think he got like mad about something mm. that I said or did or whatever. But, and oh yeah, the, I, and you were like, you can't get mad at me anymore. We're not together. Yeah, something like that. And then I just I slowly stopped answering, and then he start, got a new girlfriend, and mm. I got a new boyfriend. Yeah. So it was like that. But um, also always trust. And then your, he flipped the switch. <laughs> yeah. Then he called us foul cunts or something, <laughs> right? Foul, yeah. foul bitches. Feral. Those bitches are mad foul. Those bitches are mad foul. That's where feral and foul stemmed from. Mm-hmm. And. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Still for that, whatever. But it's kind of funny now. It is funny. Yeah. Hey, you um, made a Gwalski. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, it was so funny. As soon as he said it, she put it on a hat. Oh, as soon as <laughs> She was yeah. texting the merch team. As like, soon as he get said it, I hat. texted. I was like, can we make Farrell and Fowl crop tops? And it was like number <laughs> oh, one. Oh, it's crop tops. Yeah. Number one seller for two weeks. And I was like, fuck you, Nick. <laughs> that's like always a great move <laughs> always a great move. like on your part like whenever someone's giving you shit like the eat shit hat yeah you got it eat shit. you got you just gotta take it and then it's like oh i will capitalize off this i will capitalize off being foul you wanna you wanna fuck with me i'm gonna make some money off you yeah oh my god yeah breakups are fucking brutal but i think just number one thing feel your feelings and don't be ashamed of it yeah don't be ashamed like after a breakup i feel like people are so embarrassed to be sad it's like no i'm fine i'm fine i'm totally fine yeah everything's good no it's okay to be sad you just fucking you just got your little heart broken of course you're fucking upset i know it's like oh my god feel the feelings i wish (laughs) i felt the feelings i didn't do that and it totally fucked me up and i fucked other people over yeah that's my biggest regret after was jumping into something and then hurting someone yeah that was not cool and then you look back and it's like okay you did the whole breakup that was already fucked up enough and Mm -hmm. then you just doubled down and did it again someone take your time to heal yes. don't jump right back into shit especially in this time because i feel like not this time this age like a lot of people are looking for something serious mm-hmm. and you don't want to lead someone on like mm-hmm. it's just it's just fucked up just be honest be honest oh my god i wish i was more honest i feel so bad about it till this day i, I never talked about that i still feel well not still because i never really said it because we just kind of like we were like, fuck y'all. Yeah. But I feel totally terrible about how that all went down. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I know. You never really got a chance to say Jake how you The Jake and Josh feel. situation. Mm-hmm. Like, I was actually thinking about it the other day. I'm like, should I text him? I'm like, no, he hates my guts. He hates. But I, like, he didn't do anything wrong. Like, I genuinely feel so terrible. Yeah. Like, I just completely... Granted, like, I ended things with him, and he totally blew up, and it was like, okay, you're getting a little possessive, but still, I did start dating his best friend. Yes. Which is like, I think that's... Making out on his couch. <laughs> I think that's fine. I think you can date whoever you want to yeah. date, and I think they should figure that out. He was he was in his little grieving process. It yeah. just so happened to walk in. <laughs> yeah. and uh, But I, I feel poorly about how it was handled mm-hmm. after, because I totally it was did immature, hurt I, him. Say, yes, maybe. totally immature. Yeah. But, like, when you're so in the fuck you moment, I feel like that happens when you go through a lot of breakups, especially if, like, he cheated on you, she cheated on you. You always want to get on social media and be like, fuck that person, say all this crazy shit. You're always going to look like the, just, like, an imbecile. Mm. Just don't. T- text it in your group chat. It's it's hard to not to do that when you're in the moment. You you just have yeah. your eye on the prize. <laughs> exactly. I made hats. Yes. So um, <laughs> uh, I totally regret the way that situation was handled. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, think before you act and say and thoroughly think through your decisions don't make decisions on a whim after a breakup it's because, easier said than done oh of course but you need to like tell your friend after a breakup or send this podcast to your friend right now <laughs> if you're in a relationship that you might end soon or if in your own relationship at all and make them listen to it so that they can handle you with care yes after a fucking breakup because it is so crucial to have friends and what sucks is if like what if someone doesn't have a best friend after a I fucking know. breakup or like have someone to talk to but sometimes like a lot of the times like i'm thinking of uh, we have a lot of like high school listeners like mm-hmm. this is a very mature way to handle a breakup is mm-hmm. what we're talking about right mm-hmm. now but the, the way it's handled in high school is a lot different <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and like a lot of the times in high school like <clears throat> somebody gets fucked over and then the they're left without any friends because of the breakup. Like, mm-hmm. it's it, because everyone's involved. There's like so much drama going on. For sure. And it's like, you didn't, I guess you never really had like a high school boyfriend, really. Mm-hmm. But 
I just what are, like what's good advice for us high schoolers because that's a way different mentality than what we're talking about right now oh my god because you can't you can't you just simply it's you're not allowed your brain doesn't allow you to act this mature in high school I know but because there's so much more that goes on with it the only advice that I, I could give any young girl is always value your friendships over like romantic relationships yeah. oh, your yeah. friendships always come first and it's so easy to get blinded by that because when you're in high school it's like your first love and you you think it's like everything and it's the mm-hmm. person you're gonna marry but don't neglect your relationships yeah. that's something I've always made sure I've never done like when I'm in a relationship you can't neglect your friendships mm-hmm. because it's like it's understandable when you're new to a relationship you hang out with the person all the time or yeah. whatever but you can't forget about the people that were there before your relationship because it's like one day when that ends or not that it will but if it, it does it's very, end, it's very very possible yeah. in high school, you're, oh, in you're, high school, in high school sure. you're definitely probably gonna for break sure. up by the way like you don't want to be labeled as the bad friend that just forgot all of their friends and also that's just a shitty feeling because you don't want to be left with nobody mm-hmm, yeah. and then you, you wouldn't want your best friend to do that to you there's so many situations like in college when my roommates got boyfriends I was like oh there they go yeah like I like one of my best friends I was like fuck I never see her anymore I can't talk to her anymore because she's always with her boyfriend which is fine but make time for your friends make time for your friends don't neglect your your re- friendships yeah. ever and don't make any I guess a, a high school I'm talking about my ass but I've seen a lot of people like make decisions mm-hmm. in high school that like like following their boyfriend, their boyfriend to college, to college. Yeah. Yes. yes it's like I did that you did that yes or, or, don't do that or leaving college to go back to your boyfriend at home and yes. be closer to him yes Just like, yeah you, you gotta focus on yourself it seems really hard but and you're honestly better off just breaking up before college. I always say that people are like, no, we're high school sweethearts. I'm like, that is one in a billion, bro. And in, in college is like, oh, that is when you finally get to immerse into new different people. Mm-hmm. It's like, you're going to meet someone that you love 10 times more than this fucking high school bitch or that you're with. Yeah, it's your it's your um, phase one of finding yourself. Phase two is after college. Mm-hmm. And then phase three is... Uh, TBD. <laughs> Working on that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd say that's like 30. A marriage, yeah. Yeah. No, we're close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to do that. I had a, a boyfriend in high school, and two things that I used to do was one, I used to like wait around, like for him to like make plans. Mm-hmm. And like, there's this Taylor Swift lyric that's literally like, I used to like cancel my plans just in case he calls, which is literally what I would do. I would oh not hang out with my friends. I would just like stay at home and like wait for him to ask me to hang out. So then eventually my friends just stopped asking Inviting me to hang out. Yeah. And then I would get so upset and be like, well, you guys like don't invite me anywhere. Like I feel like so left out, whatever. And they'd be like, well, we know you're not going to come anyways. Like yeah. we know that you're going to pick him over us every time. So by the time I was like a senior, I felt like, I didn't have like a close best friend anymore because mm-hmm. all I wanted to do was like spend my time with a person who like barely even wanted to spend time with me and he mm-hmm. was my boyfriend. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like what you said, like prioritizing your relationship, but also like your friendships are just way more important yeah. at the end of the day. Cause I'm still friends with my friends. Exactly. I'm not still dating that guy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You're not? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and, and like you just said with like, he barely even wanted to spend time with you. Yeah. It's like, there's so many relationships, like still to this day where girlfriends are like begging their boyfriend to like show any ounce of affection or acknowledgement. I can't And imagine. like, oh well, my God, like that is just to me, it's like, I don't want to be like, mean right now but like look in the mirror you desperate bitch like yeah. why would you ever beg for someone's attention or like if someone is doesn't if you're not the first thought in their head they don't want to text you they don't want to hang out with you fuck them because there's someone else that does yeah. like are you seriously waiting around for joe schmo who's fucking beating his meat and playing Warzone right now <laughs> instead of my hanging high out school with self girlfriend? needed to hear this yeah. so bad like, seriously what are you what are you doing yeah. stop being a fucking idiot and it's like it's embarrassing yeah it it's embarrassing and you, you're losing yourself i honestly thought that like when i started dating like I, when i started like yeah when i started dating that mm-hmm. i would i would be like that be just because i'm like i'm i will just say it i am pretty desperate at this point <laughs> like I, I say it every week like i'm you looking want, but at the same time love. you're not though yeah yeah but like i see like i thought i was gonna be like all right yeah that, that's good I'll, I'll just take this and yeah. i'll just but like it's not that like I, you say sometimes that my standards are a little too high but like i just not what high no not high but like you, like every time like i nitpick like 
certain oh, things. Well, you're like, yes. well, dude. I'm like, you got to give them a little more time to I know. know a person. Because sometimes it takes a while for someone to come out of their shell. Yeah. But like when you know, you know. Yeah. And it's, uh, I, I just thought like I was just going to like, like, I am yours. Like I am yeah. yours. And, and I, because like that's just like kind of like my mindset, I guess. But mm-hmm. once it comes down to it, I'm like, no, the, I, this is not you what can't I spend want. Time with like, you don't want to spend time with. Yeah. So like uh, if your boyfriend isn't calling you, he probably doesn't like you. Like, yeah. stop. Like, what are you doing? He doesn't yeah, like you. Literally. He literally doesn't like you. <laughs> your boyfriend doesn't like you. <laughs> he literally isn't asking you to hang out or ignoring you or choosing the boys over you. He doesn't like you. Why are you <laughs> dating him? Stop it, you moron. Uh. Look in the mirror and say, I'm a bad bitch i don't want this boyfriend that doesn't like me yeah that hurts yeah you look like a fool i i was wearing a dunce hat for like all of my senior year of high school my like best friend and her boyfriend like they would spend all this time together they would like do everything together and i'd be like yeah i'd be like why are we like that like i'd be so confused and it's like he because he literally like doesn't doesn't even i don't even think he really even liked me that much like at the end of the day yeah oh god damn that's a tough realization especially is a little teenage oh, uh, girl. Well, I didn't even realize it until way, way, way later. Because yeah, like we like kept part. in touch for like yeah. a really long like way too long of a time. <laughs> and it took me like so long to finally realize like he just likes you because you're around. Yeah. He yeah. doesn't like you because he likes who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was tough. Yeah. That goes back to the like, well, once you realize like how you're supposed to be loved, it's like, oh, yeah. those were yeah. such shitty relationships. Totally, yeah. totally, they did not totally. even fuck with me. <laughs> like I look back at Nick, I'm like, I was doing the same shitty. Like he barely even liked me. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? He said he loved me and all this shit, but I'm like, you never even asked me. A you don't even know what love question. is. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's just like face the fucking facts, man. You are you are lucky that you found real love. Yeah, it's cool. That is cool. It is cool. Never really done had that one before. Nice. And I thought feel. I did, which is crazy. And I'm sure a lot of people listening are like, damn, do I have in love? <laughs> have I ever been in love? Because I totally thought it wasn't. It totally wasn't. In my delusional head, I, I still think and, and, and it's impossible, but I still think I'm going to have a high school boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> like I still like in the back of my head, like I I'm like. No, I didn't you miss out on that. One. I didn't. I didn't miss out on that. I'm still gonna like. He's gonna like pick me up and like. We're gonna go to prom and it's gonna. <laughs> I'm so delusional. I'm like, no, I didn't miss that whole point of my life. Like, I'm, I'm totally gonna get it at some point. <laughs> like, uh, it is kind of weird. We didn't have like high school boyfriends. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Not even a love interest, personally. I just had dark crushes. <laughs> oh, I had deep, dark, rooted crushes. I hated my guts. And I was like, you know, they love me in the back of my head. Yeah. I'm like, we're going to get married one day. Oh, it's so crazy how delusional you are in high school. Oh, and so still delusional. thinking I mean, about prom. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, I'm like, crazy. no, like, I'm going to get his letter, man. Yeah. High school makes you so... Dude, I'm watching the show. Have you guys seen Georgie and Georgina? Yeah, yeah Ginny and Georgia. Ginny and Georgia. Jo- Georgie and Georgina. Georgina. I can't stop talking about Georgina. Um, fucking, I was watching it last night and i was like wait this is a very accurate depiction of high school girls like yes. they're so horny they're always fighting all they're thinking about is boys yeah. and they think it's like the end of the world i'm like this this show is so corny but they do a great depiction it is really corny but like yeah. it, it's remember we said we didn't want to watch it for some reason and we just yeah. started watching it at the same time oh yeah i like it <laughs> yeah really i do good. like it i was like holy shit this is actually exactly what we were like in high school yeah. like stealing all the booze when your mom walked away and then just all the girls getting fucked up and then, together and then thinking you're sick for being so Post- drunk yes posting like on the <laughs> and then like like older people come and they're like okay <laughs> like, yeah oh my relax. god it's so weird it's, you're so delusional in high school you're so delusional <laughs> oh, oh I, that's another thing i i think i still think um someone's gonna be climbing into my window <laughs> Me too. I was always waiting for someone to throw a rock at my window. Playing music outside of your apartment. Yes. Life yeah. is not an 80s movie. Yeah. How do you climb to the second story so easily? Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on now. Movies, With those those vine things on the side of the house, you're going yeah. backwards. Just like a musical. leaf, man. It's going to rip you. I'm not Spider-Man. Rip. How is this happening? I don't uh, know, man. They always have to throw in a motorcycle in those shows. Though. Oh, true. <laughs> Did you know one motherfucker riding on a motorcycle in high school? Not one. Not one. <laughs> Not one. No, maybe a razor scooter. But here's the funny thing: he he can't drive it. He just owns it. Yeah, he doesn't even have. His I, I feel like I knew one of those. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, oh yeah, it's like as soon as I get my license, I'm yeah. gonna have this boy, and they crash it before they can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> has no idea how to drive it. <laughs> oh yeah, high school's a wacky ass time. Wacky ass time. Yeah. And that, and that that is something I forget. Like we always preach, like like that's is for twenty and thirty year old people, but we got high school listeners. 
And sometimes we have to forget that. I mean, yeah. sometimes we have to remember that. <laughs> and sometimes that's like when you're just so over dramatic that like you really feel like it's the end of the world. Yeah. Like I feel like once you're more mature, like a breakup is is obviously so hard. Yeah. yeah. But when you're in high school, like it's just it's just way too it's very emotional you also don't see the the bigger world yeah, yet and yeah. you're like oh you think it, that's the, all the, it is it's slim pickings yeah like yeah we, yeah you're like have, my world is over like i'm never gonna meet anyone ever again and yeah. then you're like i literally you literally are going to college yes. with a whole new group of people yes yeah. and you, you're looking at like classes from 200 to a thousand yeah. and like it, it is very like and even if pickings. you're not going yeah. to college, though, you're still not going to yeah. be in high school. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. going to go yeah. see the bigger world. Yeah, like yeah. there will be other people. Yep. There's so many people once you, <laughs> once you fucking walk off that stage yeah. with your fucking diploma. <laughs> Isn't it weird when you're in high school, you're like, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is my life. This is it. And, and there's and nothing else. It's like you have your, you don't even know shit It's yet. like you're in a, a Doug Dibbidome. Yeah, <laughs> you are in a Doug Dibbidome. Uh, yeah, you're in Sandy Sandy uh, Cheeks' dome yes. in high school forever. <laughs> Domes make me think of the Simpsons movie. Oh, I yeah. I love that movie. It's <laughs> a good movie. That's like, that's like Spongebob to me. <laughs> I want to go watch, I feel lighthearted now, I want to go watch some Spongebob. Hell yes. I think we said some good things for the for the crowd. I think this is good. I think yeah, this we is got good. a lot of things off of our chests, and yeah. we could think, and we can feel our feelings. We yeah. can do that. We are capable of that. Yes. Yes. Feel those fucking feelings. Ride that wave. And um, being being open to talk that's something yes. you weren't very no. very interested in never was never <laughs> yeah it's cool to i think talk. you're getting a little bit better maybe quite quite honestly <laughs> quite honestly thank you to this podcast truly <laughs> thank you to my friend grace and thank you to you guys thank you to doug dibbidome this is it <laughs> spider pig spider pig <laughs> no, all right we're gonna go watch some spongebob <laughs> no Simpsons. we can't he's a pig <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. Also, for these Thursday topics, if you guys have anything you want us to like specifically cover, comment um, what you want us to talk about, or if there's anything like problem wise that you just you need help with, this is what Thursday episodes are for. So it's serious. Thursday episodes are really for the people and whatever you guys want to talk about. So Tuesday episodes are for staying silly and talking about our crazy lives, but Thursdays we want to try to help you guys as much as we can. So let us know if there's anything specific you want us to talk about, and we will hit it head on. We're, and, and I've got to be honest, it's kind of hard to come up with topics. Yeah, it <laughs> we've is, been realizing like, that. We don't know like what you guys. What do you guys want to hear? And it's about. for you guys, so it's yeah. Please tell us. Yeah, let us know. Um, and we'll talk to you guys on Tuesday. Word.